So now we have to define demand constraint. And we will create something called unmet demand, which simplifies our life and we will give it the same format as yeah. So we looks like this. Normally where were we putting our demand information in earlier cases? Just below this table, right? So let's create one one let's insert one new cell here. So I right click and insert a new cell. I will give it a different color. Uh, what color? We are running out of color. No, that's not nice. Let's say I'm using this color here, gray. So here my idea is to define the demand, okay? So demand for each of these locations. So the demand of Northwest will be here, the demand of Southwest will be here, upper middle here. So what is the demand? Do we have demand information in the case? We have demand information. But that is for 2007, right? How did demand increase over time? They say that it increases 80% per year, okay? So let's say we are trying to solve this for the year 2008, okay? So how can we define, how can we get the demand for 2008? Uh, let's, let's copy our demand location, okay? We just select them and copy, Control-C, and then we start a new Excel sheet. We call it, let's say, rename demand forecast, okay? And here we will, then I paste the names of the location. Oh, it's gone. So I have to go back and copy again. I go back and copy the names of the demand location. And I go to the new one and I paste it, control V. So I have the locations here. So let's say we have the information for 2007. Then we can calculate 2008, 2009, and 2010. Because they say that they expect after next, uh, for the next three years, the, the growth rate will be 80%. So let's, let's, let's put the information we have from 2007. We have 320,000. Then southwest we have 200,000. Then upper midwest we have 160,000. Then lower midwest we have 220,000. Northwest we have 350,000 and then 175,000. So how will you get the value for 2008? Multiply you multiply it with 1.8. So then we just drag it. Then we will have the 80% for all the cells, okay? Similarly, you can again do the same thing here. Multiply the 2008 value with 1.8. So you just drag it down. Will it work? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I drag the next one down. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So now what we'll do, we will just copy this demand from here for 2008. So I'm just copying it, control C. Oops. Yeah, just control C and then we go to our first sheet and we paste it here. But remember to paste it as number. Okay? Not the function, but the number. So we paste it as number. So these are our demand values for 2008. So now we want to create a function for unmet demand. 
So now, how, how will we create a unmet demand constraint? What I would do, I would first copy the demand locations once again, and I will paste it here with one gap. So I will just paste it here. And this is the place where I will define my unmet demand. Just the line above where I have, I have put the names. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you do it. So you can have the names up or below, doesn't matter. So if I start a function, I start with equal to and then I, I click on the demand of this place. Okay, the first one. So I click on the demand of this place minus the minus sum of how much we deliver to that place from all the locations all the supply locations and then finish it okay so then we will just drag it down drag it to the right for all of them okay so now we see all our demand are unmet of course because we haven't done any kind of optimization yet so all our demand are unmet So now we have set more or less most of the important things, uh, the decision variable, the constraint. What is it that we are missing now? So for any optimization problem, we have to define three things. Objective function, decision variables, constraints. We have done constraints and decision variables, right? So let's say here I write objective function and then I will just copy the same format actually so I, I will click here and then I will click here it will give me the same formatting so normally here our goal is to minimize the cost our goal is to minimize the overall cost right so what we can do is we can define the cost in different categories like shipping cost, warehouse cost, inventory holding cost, okay? You can define the cost in different categories. And then the final one will be the sum of all of it, okay? So let's say we start with shipping cost. So we just in list them first, shipping cost, then inventory holding cost, then let's say warehouse cost, yeah these are the three main costs that we have. Let's first define these three, okay. What is, how do we know our shipping cost? What is our shipping cost? How much is it? So we go to shipping cost, we start a function, we write some product, some product, all our decision variables. So this array and multiplied with the cost array. This is our shipping cost. Here I used comma, here I used comma between the two arrows. In some cases you have to use semicolon, okay? So the next one is inventory holding cost. How can you define inventory holding cost here? Actually we can do it in different ways, but let's say I'm just starting with a function here. We have 475, one, two, three. We multiply this with sum of total warehouse open. Okay. And plus we have 0 0.165 then multiplied with the flow, right? I'll just go with sum, sum of all the demand. I'm assuming that we will always meet all the demand. 
and the total demand will be our total flow. I'm, I'm going with that assumption. But then we also have something called warehouse cost. What is that? So each of the warehouse has some fixed cost and some variable cost. Okay. For the warehouse cost, we will we'll do some product. Oops, not some, some product. Some product of if the warehouse, the small warehouses are open, then comma, their fixed cost. Then we close the bracket. Then we have plus. Then some product again. If the large warehouses are open, then they are fixed cost, which are here, not this one. These are the capacity. Okay, so then we close it. Then plus, we have the variable cost, 0 0.20 per unit flow. To count for that, we will use sum of our demand. Sum of our demand multiplied with 0 0.20, 0 0.20, or the other way around, 0 0.20 multiplied with sum of the demand. So one last thing we have to consider is the shipping cost recoup. If you read the case on the last page, you will see that the company, they charge all the customers $3 per 40 unit shipment. And then they're giving the transportation task to UPS. And this is the cost, okay, that we were considering. So the, the, the money they're charging from the customer for transportation cost is actually not part of the transportation cost. So the three dollar they are getting from the customers that actually can be deducted from the transportation cost they are occurring. This cost is based on from where to where, which supply location to which demand location. So based on this, we have this transportation cost, but we can deduct the three dollar uh, per four unit which they are charging from the customer because the cost did not occur to them because they are taking the money from the customers, right? So we can add it here. And to do that, we will say, okay, I start with the function, okay? And what is my total transportation cost? First, I have to get my demand, so let's say sum. And to get the demand, we can select all of it, or I will just go for this one, because I am assuming we will meet all the demands, so I'll select this one. Demand divided by four, because we transporting four units, okay, and then I will close this bracket and also I will uh, put another bracket on the beginning and then multiply this with three. So now we get that shipping cost recoup. And so the, my total cost would be, I will just uh, form, take this format here. So my total cost would be sum of these three cost minus what I will get back. So this is not part of the cost, so I deduct it. Okay, so this is the value, okay, my total cost. And this is what I will optimize, I will minimize. So to do that, I go to data and then I go to solver. And my objective is this one. So I set my objective cell. I'm going to minimize it by changing cells here. If you remember the case here, uh, our question was, what is the cost of sportstaff.com in cursive? All our warehouses are leased in St. Louis. Okay, so we are assuming that we will use only the St. Louis location to meet all the demand. So here, by changing cells, we will go for only the St. Louis ones. Okay, these ones up to this part, not the total one, because that is j just the add up of a small and large one. But these ones will be able to change. Okay, by changing cells, this one. And then we add our constraint. So you can add in different order, it doesn't matter as long as you have all the required constraints listed there. So what I will do, I will start with supply constraint. So I'm actually, we are now solving only for St. Louis, so I will select only this one, okay? And then it should be greater than or equal to zero. So my excess capacity has to be either zero or higher, right? So I add that, and then I will add my unmet demand. 
So all my unmet demand, I will select all of them, they should be zero. I have to meet all my demand. So my unmet demand should be zero. And I add it. What could be some other constraints? So here, let's say all these values here, uh, they should be positive numbers, right? Yeah, let's say I select after this part, they should be positive numbers. And to indicate that, I will say this should be greater than or equal to zero, but I cannot deliver negative units. So we will add this constraint. Then also these two, if my plan is open or not, they are binary. So I have to define them as binary. I'm going to add this. And uh, one more thing that I want to add is that this value should be integer, okay? because I am not likely to deliver in half unit. I'm going to deliver one unit, two unit, three unit, yeah, whole numbers, okay? So this should be integer. One more constraint that you may consider adding, but I think if you don't add, it's not a problem at the moment, but we can add is that this value here should be equal to one. So that would mean that we cannot have at a time both the small and large warehouse open. We have to have only one of them open, either the small one or the large one, okay? So I will say, okay, and we I have this list of uh, constraints here. All of them are here. And then I'm using the simplex solver and I'm going to solve. And yeah, uh, we found a solution, so okay. And this is our solution. And actually this is the right number, I know. So all our demand are met. We have no unmet demand. This is the excess capacity we have in St. Louis. We are using the large, we are using one of the large uh, warehouses, which has 4 million capacity. And if you look in the total demand, it is about 2.56. Yeah, so we still have some extra capacity here in St. Louis. And these are the amounts served to each of the demand location from St. Louis. Okay, so that's how we can solve it.